Hi there, I'm Sierra here at Movo, and today I'm going to be talking about everything you want to know about starting a podcast for beginners on a budget. But before we get into it, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our upcoming how-to videos, giveaways, and more. Now let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about your podcast idea, cast, social media, the best location to record your podcast, the podcast gear you're going to need, your interface options for recording your audio, how to edit your podcast, and finally, how to get your podcast out there. So you want to start a podcast, but you're not quite sure where to start. Don't worry, we're here to help with some advice and ideas to get you started. The first thing you'll need is a great idea. What do you want your podcast to be about? In order to find your unique subject for your podcast, it's important to ask yourself a few questions. Why do you want to make a podcast? Who is your target audience? And what kind of a community do you want to create? The next step is to take an inventory of you. What are you passionate about? What do you have experience in? What are your natural strengths? What could you talk about for hours and hours? Think about ways to help your voice stand out from the pack. What's a subject you're passionate about that no one else is talking about? What subject would you be dying to listen to a podcast about, but is missing from what's already out there? What's most important is that whatever subject you choose, you love it. Podcasting takes a fair amount of time, production, and research, so it's essential that the topic is important to you. Your audience will be able to hear your passion through your podcast. The next thing you have to decide is who is going to be on your podcast. Do you want your voice to carry the narrative of your podcast as a solo host? Do you and your sister have the best back and forth? Have you always wanted a talk show with your three best friends? Make sure everyone you choose to be a part of your podcast has the time and energy to commit to the show. If you want a lesser time commitment for your co-hosts, another option is to have your co-host switch off or just stick to having frequent guests instead. There's no wrong answer, so pick whatever works best for you. And you can always change your mind later if it doesn't work the first time. Once you've decided on your subject and your hosts, it's a good idea to start planning the name and social media for your podcast. Finding a short and catchy name is a great idea to help people remember it. And when deciding on a name, think about who your target audience will be. Search for other podcasts to make sure no one already has a popular show with that name, and check to see if versions of that name are already claimed for social media handles. Whether you want to use Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, or Facebook, consider which platforms are most used by your target audience. Try to find social media handles from your podcast that are the same across all platforms. That way it will help more people find your podcast. By building up your podcast's social media before you launch your first episode, it'll help give you an audience right off the bat. Spread the word about your podcast to groups and individuals that fit your target audience, and always share your growing project with all your friends and family. When it comes to podcasting, it's important to choose a space that is as quiet and well-insulated as possible. Carpeted rooms are a great choice because they absorb more sound. Rooms with too much concrete, tile, or wood can create a sound reflection effect, causing your audio to reverberate. So finding a space with carpeting or rugs is preferred. Be careful of rooms with too many windows, as outside noise can interfere with your recording. If you have to record in a room with outside noise or lots of windows, try to get some heavy curtains that you can pull over the windows when you record. And always remember to close any open doors and windows. If the space you have available is less than ideal, add sound absorbing objects to the walls like foam panels or even wool blankets in a pinch. If your recording space only has wood floor or tile, acquiring a small area rug with a high pile or that's plush or dense will help further soundproof your space. If you want to test the sound reflections of your desired location, walk around and clap your hands or snap your fingers and listen for sound bouncing back. The less reflections you hear, the better. Ideally, the space will feel dense and quiet with little to no reverb. The last thing you need to keep in mind when it comes to your recording location is ambient room noise, such as refrigerators, air conditioners, washing machines, and dishwashers. Turn off fans, ACs, and nearby appliances before recording and you'll be good to go. Now that you've got your recording location planned out, let's talk about your gear. The best sounding podcasts sound like the speaker is right next to you with clear, full-bodied audio. This is achieved not only with a good soundproof location, but more importantly with a high quality microphone. There's a lot of different microphones out there, including XLR, USB, dynamic, condenser, desktop, and lavalier mics. It can be overwhelming knowing which one to choose for your podcast, so we're here to help. 
If you're a beginner to podcasting or you just want the most user-friendly yet high quality mic option, we definitely recommend getting a USB desktop microphone. USB microphones boast the advantage of having a plug and play design, meaning they don't require any external recorders or equipment. All you have to do is plug one directly into your computer's USB port Open a recording program such as Audacity, QuickTime, GarageBand, or Anchor, and you're ready to go. A couple quick tips though. Don't forget to select your USB microphone as your input device in your computer settings. Otherwise, you might accidentally record your podcast using your computer's internal microphone, even though your mic is plugged in. Also, always do a short test recording and listen back to it before jumping into recording a whole podcast so that you can make sure to adjust sound and troubleshoot any technical difficulties. Today, I'm using the Movo UM700, which is a great option for a super high quality USB mic at an accessible price point. The UM700 has a whole host of features, including volume and gain control, adjustable polar patterns, and headphone monitoring so you can hear your audio in real time. It also includes a removable mic stand and a foam windscreen. If you want to upgrade your setup just a little more, you can get the ASM5 articulating arm and the PF6 pop filter. The ASM5 allows you more height and flexibility with the microphone, and the pop filter helps prevent vocal plosives such as strong P's and B's. The UM700 comes with a connector cable so you can plug the mic directly into your laptop. If your laptop only has USB-C ports, the UM300 is a great option as it comes with a USB-C to USB-C cable in addition to the standard cable. The UM300 is our smallest USB microphone, which is great for those who are working in a very limited space. It shares several of the same features as the UM700, including gain control, adjustable volume, and headphone monitoring. And it's available at a very competitive price point, which is great for beginners. Whether you choose the popular UM700 or the more compact UM300, you'll be on your way to starting a professional sounding, high quality podcast. Now that you have your gear, it's time to start recording. Once your microphone is plugged into your computer, select which program you wanna record with. There are lots of options to choose from. Some of our favorites are Audacity, GarageBand, Anchor, and QuickTime. The advantage of recording in a program like Audacity, GarageBand, or Anchor is that you can both record and edit within the program. QuickTime is an easy and simple way to record your podcast if you don't plan on editing your recording or if you wanna upload your completed audio to one of the mentioned programs. So one of the first things you wanna do when setting up your mic is adjust your gain. Now gain is different than volume. Volume is what you hear, gain is how sensitive the mic is to your voice. So you wanna find the sweet spot. If it's too low, then your voice is gonna to be too quiet. But if the gain is too high, it's definitely gonna distort your audio and you don't want that. So depending on how your voice is, you wanna find the sweet spot that works for you. When recording your audio, try to keep the mic around six inches from your mouth. The closer you are to the mic, the more of that rich podcast voice you'll get. If you're too far away, your audio can sound really distant and echoey, but you also don't wanna be too close. If you are, your plosive sounds like P's and B's and things like laughter could distort your audio. So it's kinda of like Goldilocks, you wanna find the spot that's just right. And again, before recording, don't forget to select your USB microphone as your input device in your computer settings. Otherwise, you might accidentally record your podcast using your computer's internal microphone, even though your mic is plugged in. If you're using headphones for live monitoring while you record, make sure your USB mic is selected as the output device in your settings as well. And make sure your headphones are plugged into the mic itself, not your laptop. Once you've recorded your audio, making a few basic edits is usually a good idea before uploading your podcast. Editing out awkward pauses, mess ups, audio glitches, and clothing rustles will help your podcast sound more polished and professional. If you're brand new to audio editing, don't worry. There are tons of articles, tutorials, and educational materials at your fingertips for whichever editing program you choose. If you wanna figure out which audio recording or editing program is right for your podcast, try out a few different ones and see what you like. Some are more complex for the more experienced podcaster, and some are more simple and user-friendly for the beginner. It's up to you to decide which one's right. If you've already recorded and edited your podcast, it's time to get it out there to the world. If you've been using an editing program like Anchor, an added bonus is that you can upload your podcast for distribution directly from the platform. Otherwise, if you edited your podcast in a program such as GarageBand or Audacity, you can export your edited audio to your computer in an MP3 or WAV file. 
Once you have your file saved on your computer or tablet, you can upload it to a distribution program like Buzzsprout, Podbean, or Spreaker. Many of these hosting sites also offer in-program editing as well if you're looking for a one-stop shop. Once you've uploaded your file, after a short approval period, these hosting services will distribute your podcast to popular platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. Next, you just need to make a title and description for your uploaded episode, something interesting and catchy that will captivate your audience. You can experiment with what kinds of titles are most interesting to you. In the description and show notes, tell a little bit about the episode, the inspiration or education behind it, and always include how your listeners can find you on social media and rate your podcast. You did it! You're ready to share your voice with the world. Congratulations on starting your podcast. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and good luck. Movo. Creators want it.